Hey everyone, welcome to uh, this kind of fun thing we're doing for the next hour. I'm Mark Mann, this is John Kreidler from Leica. John is a product specialist and a teacher at the Leica Academy. And what I love having John around when I'm taking photographs is kind of uh, more of a technical explanation of what I'm doing rather than just feeling it from the gut. So excited to have that. We're gonna do some direct comparisons of some of the Leica gear, some that I own, some that I'd love to own, and some that I will never own. <laughs> never uh, say never. Never say Mark. never. But uh, that's what we're gonna do today. We have the beautiful, wonderful, good friend of mine, Coco, on set. And she's gonna be sitting patiently as I mess some pictures of her. And we've got Paul here who works uh, a lot with Capture One and he's going to be our digital tech and that's going to mean that, you know, I'll be able to not mess up so much and really be able to show you stuff that's going on. Without anything further, um, have we had lunch? We did have lunch okay. and it was excellent. Thank so you. we can start. Let's start. Okay. Let's start with the Leica S3 mm -hmm. and your favorite lens to go to, mm -hmm. the 120. Yeah, so folks, this is my absolute go-to setup. It's what I'm used to, it's what I use all the time. It's what I've made at least one of my portraits that got bought with, and then three. So, three. yeah, so Good. without further ado, let's grab that camera. All right. Um, in the spirit of all honesty, uh, we are gonna keep our lights the same. We have a pro photo head with a softbox, a three foot octa with a little diffusion on it. I got one light coming out onto the background there. And we're not gonna change our light and we're not gonna change our light settings um, because I wanna try and keep this as constant as possible so that uh, you know the, the comparisons are as honest as we can make them. So let's start. Hello, Hello. how are you? Um, all right, so F two and a half, one one two fifth at 100 ISO. Let's see how it looks. Oh my God, you're gorgeous. That's beautiful. Oh, first thing you have to do, folks, is turn the strobe on. There we go. Strobe looked a little dim. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. I think we're in pretty good shape with our first few images. How do you feel about the exposure, Paul? Touch, a touch, touch brighter? Yeah, just a touch brighter. All right, folks, because I don't want to um, change my aperture from two and a half here, I'm just going to pull this up a little bit more power. Let's see what that does. Coco, how have you been? Where's your summer? Where have you been this summer? Traveling. Traveling? Yeah. So do you go, I am a traveling man? Do you know what that means? Are you a Freemason? <laughs> Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Beautiful. All right, so let me take like two or three more frames and try and get like a frame that I would be happy with. Chin up that little bit. Beautiful. There we go. Last one. Excellent. All right, so that that's beginning to look like uh, something that I would make as a photograph, so it pretty much looks like mine. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, Paul, have we done anything in the capture settings? No, nope, everything you're looking at is straight out of camera. So John, people often say, um, hang on, let me see if we can both get in this camera. There we are. Uh, people talk about like a color space. Right. I think this is a pretty good example of what people are talking about because right. this is directly out of the camera and it yeah. looks stunning. So the, the big thing with Leica and Leica Color is that There's your camera buddy. Or where do you want to be? This one? Okay. This one. This one. Anyone you want. All right. <laughs> hey, so um, the, the big thing about Leica Color is it's, it's very natural. Uh, so it's not you know too vivid or too flat, it just gives a real natural looking image. So if we take a look at these, uh, I think that's what we'll first see is the can skin we, tones can we go look, to the screen, please, look very natural. Uh, and they're not, they're not too warm or not too magenta. And um, the one thing I like about uh, Capture One is the Pro Standard ICC profile. 
which Paul, is that what we're uh, right now we're generic. So okay. So let's switch to that. There we go. And oh, it's change. just subtle change, yeah. Subtle, but in the skin tone range, I think it's beneficial to be shooting, uh, particularly in the pro pro standard uh, ICC color space. Hey, Paul, uh, can you zoom into the eye to see if I actually got anything sharp? Absolutely. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's unusual for me in the spirit of all honesty because I <laughs> never have anything sharp. Yeah. So I am delighted to see that. And we can also pretty much tell what Coco had for breakfast this morning just yes. by, you yes. know, how, how the veins in our eyes are looking there, which means <laughs> that you had a healthy breakfast and a night's sleep. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that's cool. Now, what I love about this lens is if we can just kind of slide on out a bit so we can see a little bit of the fall off, maybe right. from the hair to the yeah, eye. Yeah, the, the hair the, or the, yeah. There you go. So what I love about this lens and what, what to me makes this particular like a 120 millimeter medium format lens, 95 on a 35, but anyway, I don't know. Um, is 95 the on the medium format, 120 on, on the 35. Uh, um, it's is complicated, Mark. <laughs> what, what can I, that's it's, why we're here. <laughs> it's the fall off, John. Right. It's, it's, Definitely. It, it's the fall off, and I, I find, you know, uh-oh. Um, I find that the fall off seems to... Um, it adds to the three-dimensionality of the image. Exactly. And it also forces the viewer to actually look at what you want them to, which would right. be the area which of focus, but yet still the, uh, you know, the out-of-focus portions of the image are the emotional bits that allow you, uh, as an artist, creating a certain look like you definitely have. Can we go back a very to specific look, uh, allows you uh, to fully address your, your visual signature. Now, just from looking at this, if I was standing here and my clients were going to come in, right. here's what I would actually do to this image before I presented it. So I think we've got a tiny little bit too much red in the skin. Now, this is amazing about Capture One and tethering. Um, so a little bit too much red in the skin. So with a super quick adjustment here, are you guys being able to see this? Yeah, just dial down the red a little bit. Uh, there you go, that's beautiful. beautiful. And then what I would do is I would pop the highlights down a tiny, tiny little bit. There we go, mm -hmm. just flatten out a bit and I would open these shadows a tiny little bit. Now, Polka, is anything over or under on this or is this the exposure um, we want it to be? Yeah. Excellent, and there's absolutely no sharpening. On, oh, oh, there's standard sharpening. Just whatever came in through the camera. Okay. So this is beautiful. Can I see that earring? Just close up on that earring. Absolutely. See this, yeah. this, this kind of way that you know it's an earring, but it's more like a, when you use a, 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 a small F number, it's more like a, a rendering rather right. than a photograph. Right. And this is what I absolutely adore about this. Now you've been telling me for a long time that you like the 100 millimeter the lens. The 100 millimeter. Summicron S lens is something spectacular. Let's mount it on the S3 okay. and see what you create oh, with gosh. it. What do you say? All right, let's do that. All right. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera off. Safety Support first, and, folks. Yeah. I'm gonna hand that to you. You got it. Now, um, once again, folks, this is a lens that John has been saying that I should try, and uh, I have actually never shot with it, I don't think. Um, Immediately, I notice it's smaller, yeah. um, a little easier to handle, right. maybe, um, and I can actually go down to f2 on it right. instead of being two and a half there. Right. But is that the same considering the focal lens, John? Yeah, so this being 100 would be like an 80 versus a 95. Right. The other thing that people like about the 100 is the focus throw. While this is about 420 degrees of focus throw with the 120, this is about um, half of that, maybe 120. Ah, so you can get to focus so quicker. So if, right, exactly right. Cool, well let's try it. All right, let's so I'm at F2 here, so I may have to turn down my light. Sorry, <clears throat> I have to maybe do something with my light, but we'll see well, let's in a see. sec. Um, so I'm gonna come in a little bit closer because I, than I was before, because I wanna try and get the same frame. Ah, it's stunning. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. I'm such a better photographer a when I have two, uh, yes, somebody two. doing my light and my exposure. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. And eyes are a little more to the light, Coco. There we go. Beautiful. Wow. wow. Oh, wow. wow. All right, so. Was that a uh, credit card or check? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. All right, but here's my question. Yeah. I know from my gut that I kind of like this better. Right. But I don't know why. So gut feeling is I kind of like how that feels better. Right. Is it because it's a little lighter? No, I, th I think part of it is, it's, A, it's a newer lens design. So right. this was introduced in 2014. Right. So some of the things that we've done uh, in, in terms of the optical design uh, that we learned even from other right. product lines has gone into that. Uh, and it is a Summicron, it is an F2 versus uh, the 2.5 of the 120. Uh, and part of it is, you know, it's shorter, there's less elements that the and light's it, going it's through. not a zoom lens, it's an 80. No. Oh, it's an 80. So it, right. the, it is a zoom, but it's, it's less a, yeah, of a it's zoom. It's a great portrait focal length. Right. Myself, I'm. You're an I 80. love 7580 yeah. guy. Um, I always used 80s before. Um, was that in the 80s or? In the 80s. And then the I, 90s, you went to 95? Correct. Okay. And now I'm at 120. Pretty. Or so, I feel I've earned the right to be at 120. Definitely. Hey, definitely. Paul, can I ask you a favor? Can you bring up one from each just on this screen? Sure. Um, and I think, I think in the spirit of all honesty, if we could match the lightness. Um, on the... Yeah, just so they look they look, closer, look a little bit closer. So a little, I mean, I suppose exposure adjustment. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so here, here's two things that I noticed right away, folks. I don't know which camera we're on. We're on this camera. Um, number one is that I do like the compression on the 120 more. Right. I feel like the 120 has given me a little bit more compression, Definitely. which I really like. But in saying that, it, the, the 100 feels a little more three-dimensional. Yeah. When did this happen? And I'm going to tell you what happened. This happened, let's see, 2017. 2017. This adapter? Yep. All right, folks. And it was part of the um, uh, it was part of the plan all along to do this uh -huh. uh, because with the mirrorless camera, uh -huh. you can adapt all kinds of lenses. Right. So why not adapt an S lens to an SL2? So, um, once again, something that I have never paid attention to, um, and to be honest, I wasn't really sure that it existed, but I'm very curious, because this is the SL2 camera, which is a 35 millimeter camera, um, and I use this a lot as well, not so much for my studio portraits, but for just about everything else. Um, and I'm excited to see what an S lens looks like on this guy. Thank you, tether cable. Tether cable. Tether cable. Um, so cool. one nice thing about Capture One and Leica, uh, now that Leica is fully supported by Capture One, there's nothing to download, there's no plugins, so as long as you have Capture One Pro 21, you're ready to tether uh, your Leica cameras that tether. So primarily the S and the SL family of products, and if you had a uh, M240 with a grip, you could also tether. All right, so back to our other settings, okay. which were manual. Okay. Um, and we have F2 at this camera. Right. Shutter speed is at 125. Okay. And uh, my ISO, it should be at 100. Correct? Yeah, it's at 600. Yep. Menu. I'm, um, I'm much, I'm much more used to. Uh, I got it. I'm much more used You're to the. Uh, ah, okay. See, these are the things. Menu, photo. There you go. Okay. ISO. Oh, you can just do it like that. Yeah. Oh, there you that's go. Right, see, yeah. that's how it works. Very so, intuitive. So F two point two. And let's go to manual. Okay. I thought it was in manual. Uh, it was in video and manual, but now we'll just here we can go here. 
and then go here. Cool. And then boom. Okay, Buttons. and traditionally, we'd have to turn the remote on. Yeah, if you turn the remote on, folks, you do get some strobe. If you don't turn the remote on, that doesn't really Air happen. Air is still a pretty good insulator, But you I understand. But you handed me this uh, camera at 2,500th of a second, Joe. Uh, All right, we're back to worked. one, two, five, F2. Wow. Wow. Wow, I'm close. So the focusing is set to the back button? It actually is. Wow. Let me come out a little bit because I want to see that background. That's oh, it's pretty. Boom. Wow. Coco, I, ju I just want you to forget how handsome I am for a moment and just try and react nor I know how hard it is for you to just, you know, sit there, but just 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 forget how handsome I am for a moment and think happy thoughts. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Wow. So that feels pretty good. Oh yeah. Um should we do a comparison super quick with uh, this yeah. On yeah, because yeah. we were one we're one computer down. So yeah, obviously the lens is a little longer on the 35. Is that right, John? Am I so that yeah, it's 100 millimeter. Wow. On the 35 and on the S3, it's 80. It feels very similar though. You know, it it, it yeah. doesn't. It feels like just like a little back and front. Right. Um, is making all the difference. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like I have to really make big moves. Right. To kind of get to where it was, yep. so that's, yep. that's, that's interesting. See, but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing though. Wow, you look great. Man, you look good. So what have you been doing that you look so good? Yeah. Ah, is that a new thing for you? Are you going out much? No? Um, that's beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can bring up a comparison um, I still can't get away from, I love both of these cameras. I right. own the SL2 right. and I own S and I love them both dearly. Right. But there's something for me when I'm doing a portrait to have the glass. Right. It's because I'm old. No. Um, but there's something about the, the glass. Right. But then the convenience of the SL2S and the size and the weight. Right. Like makes a huge difference. Yeah. But it's really interesting to shoot them both side by side yep, like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the fall off is going to be different with the S because it's uh, Jake, medium Jakey, can we format. go to, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah, we look at the earrings. Right. So when we look at the fall off or the three dimensionality of, of the image, the S, the medium format, is going to give us that, even with the exact same lens, mm. uh, because of the sensor size. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's again, it's interesting as artists explore their visual signature and how they see the world or how they want to communicate. Visual signature? Yes, you've got one. I don't you have definitely a visual have one. signature. Yes. I have a please come out. <laughs> definitely. Please uh, be yeah. right. Yeah. But anyway, I prefer maybe. this. What's this? I can't even That's know. That's the SL two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the one hundred, and it's um, it is, it, and because it's the, that same lens, you're going to see obvious, well similar uh, contrast characteristics right. to the lens. When we put on uh, the next lens, when we're ready, uh, the seventy five Noctilux M, we're going to see more contrast and more, uh, because it's an F125 shooting wide open, the rendering is gonna be more, uh, more emotional and more three-dimensional. Paul, uh, so. Paul, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I know we made some slight adjustments, uh -huh. but is the color sprays out the SL2 and the S close? Yeah, so these, right now, they're both unadjusted. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, can, you can tell that. See, that, that's something else that I've really, 
I, I've appreciated right. that if I'm doing a job and I'm shooting the SL2 and the S, when I import everything right. into my system, um, or when Capture sees it, or when I have to retouch out, I don't have to spend a lot of time matching the two cameras. And that's by design. I would hope so. <laughs> it's good design. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of really important for me as somebody who wants to work with two different cameras yeah. sometimes yeah, for the same job. I mean, you know, and being able to take what Capture One does export a thousand JPEGs super quick with its algorithm right. and know that I don't have to start doing color corrections on top of my color corrections because where I'm starting from is the same. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. You know, what's interesting for me, John, is that looking, yeah, there's definitely minutia. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely the minutia that we know comes from medium format right. sensor versus right. 35 millimeter sensor. Right. Now, looking at this right now, I see differences, but they're, they're subtle. I mean, yep. they're important. Yep. And uh, if somebody who cares or really cares about that stuff would be able to make a decision. So I think a lot of it from, from what I've just done is coming down to how does a camera feel how in your hand? Feel, what, yeah. what, what do you like holding better? What do you, how do you like Right. working and better. It's, it's all part of that shooting experience. Right. And that's for for us as a manufacturer, but also people that, photo, photographers that use our product, hmm. that's huge. Uh, you know, that's why some people enjoy shooting an M because they want that rangefinder experience and how that makes them feel. Uh, where you, when you're shooting the S, you know how it makes you feel. Right. Which is different than. It makes me feel poorer. <laughs> what? what? But those the images camera. are so rich. But the images are so rich. <laughs> I bought the camera so I can't uh, afford lunch that day. Oh, gotcha. Um, but yeah, this is really interesting because I've always, you know, there was a, such a funny thing out on uh, YouTube the other day. You should look it up. It's something about stuff that like a camera owner say. Right. And I've said all the things as well, and that's why it was exceptionally funny to yeah. me. But what I'm really seeing here, and I, I, and I hope I kind of got it right, is that you are, you guys are putting a huge amount of effort to make things working cross between cross camera platforms right. with with less pain, still getting the like a look, still right. getting the like a feel. Like a look and consistent color and imaging results is. Hey Mark, can you say which which camera is which image? Uh, so Paul. S three is on the low, and then the S L two is on the right. And in this particular shot, I much prefer the, uh, the SL2. SL2, but I think I like the picture better. And that's the other yeah. thing. Hey, John, can we just do one more thing while we've got this sure. kind of rig set up? Can we do it again? But let me pull back out further because okay. I want to see the bouquet on the backdrop, which I'm okay. not really seeing right now. Okay. So I'm going to start with, start with the, the, S. the S with the 100 millimeter. Okay. Hi, Coco. Hi. Where have you been? Hey Where have you been? Um, what, what's kind of weird about this for me is that Coco is a really excellent photographer in her own right. And as much as I love taking her photograph, it's kind of a little intimidating because she, she kind of knows what I'm doing, right? There we go. Um, so I'm just going to, Coco, I'm just coming down to about here. So um, I just want you, yeah, there we go. That's beautiful. Okay. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Excellent. So guys, I'm only really doing this because I kind of want to see what the background looks like on both of these lenses because I sometimes forget I'm the only guy, guy that likes to shoot as tight as I do. But this is great. And Coco, I'm going to ask you not to move too much after I finish here so I can really get a side-by-side -side comparison. Beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. Wow. Wow. But that's my S, which I love. Right. All right, let's uh, quickly switch this over to the... the uh, SL2. Okay. Same All settings, right. yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I'm, I've left my chair exactly where it is because I want to kind of show the total difference here. 
There we go. Okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, one second, folks. Just tether it. Tether it. Try that one more time. Coco, what do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. A gummy bear. There we go. That's beautiful. So that's a real direct comparison, folks, as much as I can compare them. And I didn't, I don't know which camera I'm on here. Am I over here? Um, I didn't compare, uh, I didn't move back and forward. I wanted you to see the different crops from the same position. So, Paul, if you could just bring up one of each there. Well, color space has shifted a little bit, I wonder. Why that is? White balance is a little bit different. Oh, the white yeah. balance is different. Yeah, distance for the white balance. So, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seeing a difference that makes me go. I'm not going to use an SL2. Right. I mean, I'm seeing like the SL2 is probably the easiest way to do this. Okay. Right. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, is, yeah, I hear you. So I think, once again, it comes down to part of it. How does it feel in your hand if you like the glass? Right. But genuinely, image, are they the same pixel size, John? So SL2 is 47. Right. S3 is 64. OK, megapixel. so. So the pixel pitch is very similar, if not the same. Mm -hmm. So that comes into play when we talk about gradient, mm -hmm. right, as it transitions pixels transition from red, green, or blue. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're both going to be very similar in that regard. Jacob, can you bring us up as well? Yeah, just covering the Okay. So the, Thank uh, you. <clears throat> so to me, uh, the SL2 with the 100, right, we're getting the background is more what I would call the, the, the creamy sharpness. Would you effect. think, do you think I should try and match the crop for a fair comparison? Anybody out there? Yeah, let's give okay. it a try. All right, let me just do that once more, folks. We're gonna go no, to the- No, I'm staying where I am. We'll just okay. do, oh, match it with gonna, this. Okay. Stay on SL2, right? So yeah. you're gonna go back further. Uh, yeah. So if we had built in image overlay. <laughs> Here, wait a minute, Mark. Before you try it, with Capture One, oh, yeah, you sure can do is. image overlay. So, so with the speed and power of Capture One. Oh, wow. So you can kind of see it's ghosting. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's so I should be trying to match this right now, right? Yeah, yeah it's very cool. So we're basically going. Do you want to do that again? No, I want you to do that whole, <laughs> that whole thing you that you did. <laughs> that no whole pressure. ghost thing that you did. That's great. That's beautiful, Coco. Can you move in scooch in a little bit more? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell, me, tell me where you want yeah. me to be. How about there? Yeah. Let's try. God, it's so fast. That looks quick. Yeah, the other thing with the adapter, Mark, is obviously it's autofocus, but it still maintains the ceiling, the weather ceiling, because the S lenses are weather sealed, the adapter is, so if you... Oh, you can still Shooting take the weather and the rain, and the rain, just like you would with the S3 or SL2 with wow. native lenses. The other thing well. which always amazes me is the speed of which this file at 48 megapixels, 47, yeah. 47 megapixels, yeah. just on a super quick. Yeah. Well, USB. I mean, the speed C technology. The speed that they come in is amazing because yeah. I'm not like 30 frames behind yeah. when I'm shooting, and I've and got we've clients. We've all experienced on. that. We have, and then it drops. Yeah. But not with capture. Capture no. has been incredibly stable. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry I messed that up. But could you put the two together? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know our our mutual friend Nico. Yeah. Really worked. 
endless Nico, hours around the clock. Yeah, Nico is the making it as stable as possible. What's Nico's job? I think Nico in Germany is the what he has a title. A genius. <laughs> genius. Genius. Yeah, definitely. There we go. Okay, that's super close. Yeah. So the bouquet I think I think that this guy is the S the S, right? This is the that's the SL2. SL2. The SL2. And, the and this is the S. Huh. I mean without like asking, you know, Paul to go into fourteen hundred percent or not, making a billboard yeah. or you know yeah. it's super, super close. That's, and that's why I I like using S lenses, you know, on the SL2. Right. For portraits in, in particular, uh, because it gives you almost an S. File. An S feel. Almost. Yeah. almost. You know, it has that, it definitely has that feel. So. Uh, it has to definitely do with the contrast of the lens and the design of the lens. Yeah. Which is different than native SL lenses or M lenses. Hey, John, how does the autofocus, what's the adapter I can show you guys. It, it works really well. I mean, Mark was utilizing uh, back button autofocus and it's not going to be as quick as say a native SL lens because those are stepper motors or with the aposumicrons two stepper motors where it would actually focus quicker but remember this is a medium format lens the size and weight of it is significantly different than an aposumicron um, or zoom I had no issue with the autofocus there. To be right. honest, it felt more like autofocusing with the S camera. Mm -hmm. it seemed about the yeah. same speed as exactly. the S, and, it, and a tiny expecting. little bit slower than the SL, or slower than the SL, but just like an S. I, yeah. I, I feel it, it, that was that was super weird having that lens on that yeah. camera because it feels different and physically feels different, weight-wise feels different. Yeah. Really great. Cool. Um, now the other lens. We're gonna get a little knocked to crazy. We're gonna get knocked to crazy. Okay. Um, Let's do it. If you don't own this lens, what's great to say is my other cars are Noctilux. I think <laughs> that's kind of pretty funny. So the Noctilux is uh, kind of a, a dream aspirational lens for a lot of people. Um, we ha it's a 75 that we're gonna try today, yes. right? Yes. Yep. Um, the 50 is kind of the one that everybody raves about, but the 75 is, I think, the portrait one, um, and it's 0.95, and it's... It's uh, 1.25. Oh, sorry, excuse me, it's 1.25. The 50 is the 0.95. I've, <laughs> yeah, I've been extremely careful in my life so far never to really use one because I know if I use this from other photos I've seen I'm gonna desperately want it um, and I've tried to avoid that but today is probably the day that is going to change all this so this is the Noctilux all right so we're at 125 at 100 what did we did we want to go to, got, to two no I would I would do its best and maybe knock that down to 50 okay. for that other stop and we should get just about in the same place. Okay. All right, watch out for the unitanium coating. The what coating? The unitanium, because as soon as you touch, oh, it's too late. Oh no. Will that be credit card? Or oh, unattainable. <laughs> <laughs> unitanium, it, it's an avatar thing, I think. Well, it is. I'm kind of scared of this. Ask your kids this. about it. I'm kind of scared of this. Um, wow. So far, a little bit for me. Well, so the, the lens feels good. Let me see focus. There we go. I can come. So the close focus on that lens is 2.7 feet. So I feel I can get as close as I need to be. Wow. Um, I doubt that I have anything sharp, but I am trying my best. Uh, it's oh, Mark Man sharp. It's close, yeah. close but no cigar. Any cigars involved? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Oh, you got to see this. Yeah, you got to see this. <gasps> the insanity. Wow. The insanity. That's pretty darn sharp, Mark. Yeah. Wow. Now, what are we looking at there? 100 percent, 200 percent? Yeah, this is 100. Wow. All the way zoomed in. So let's let's come out because what I'm interested. In, oh, geez, look at the hair. Yeah. So the. Off, 
the you really get that feel of medium format. Contrast is different. Uh, because of the design of the lens, again, it's a more modern design than the 100 or the 120 lenses that we've looked at. So, But what's amazing for me to look at this picture, which looks so soft and so lush, and then there is that crazy sharpness at yeah. that tiny little point. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fabulous. Gee whiz. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really pretty. Um, and then, like, can we can we find an area of the image that goes from sharp to to soft? Yeah. Um, like maybe. Right here. Yeah. Wow. Well. Wow. So, <laughs> so basically, basically with this lens, you have one hair sharp, yeah. and everything and else wide open. Yeah. One, two, five. Yeah. Wow. At that at minimum focus distance, right? So as you would be further away from the subject, mm -hmm. that's going to change. Yeah. Obviously. Right? Yeah. Uh, how's the earring look? Wow. Yeah, Just uh, the rendering is really nice. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, I think for everybody, for we should do one a little further out yeah. because I think that's how more people shoot. It's really pretty. Yeah, I mean, the like a look a lot of times is it's always shooting wide open. But a lot of Leica photographers like to shoot at minimum focus distance when they can. Yeah, because that's the whole package, right? Right. Wow. Chin up that little bit. Think lunch. Lunch. Gypsy. Wagons. Rolling. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow, the separation. Yeah. That, oh gosh, that's so pretty. Once again, I'm not technically enough to know exactly why I love this, but I absolutely love it. I mean, a lot of it is cocoa. Yeah, that goes without saying. But, you know, it's, it's a different, uh, to me, what I see is the contrast. Yeah, it's different. I'm curious if I got any sharpness. Oh, close. Nah. None of them sharp. Have I got? Have I got shake? Oh, that's sharpish. Yeah. We could uh, go up to two fifty. Yeah, yeah, going down to two fifty. All right. Let me see if it's just my camera shake, because it would be nice to be sure. Because the flash sync is up to two fifty. On this, but not on the S, right? One two five. One two five on the S. And I'd creep in a little bit, maybe. You would. How much do I right need there. to creep? Stop. I've creeped. I've crept. All right, so I've got a little green light in the center of her eyes here. Okay, that should be in focus. That should be in focus. Right now, there. Now here, let, let me show you something, Mark. Oh no. Because okay. what, may, what may be happening, right? So you, uh -huh. what you can do is see this box? Yeah. You can move that to where you want to focus. Oh, you can. And then, uh -huh. if you punch in. Yeah, is there any way we can show? Manny, can we show these guys this? Because it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, so. All right. So, so we'll, here we have the magnification here. Uh, let's get, let's set get. to here. So, what I can do is I can move wherever I want to focus, let's say. And someone has the joystick lock on. So, we'll change it. But I could zoom in and then. Utilize focus peaking. Oh wow! And when you see it, we see our hair green. So I have actually twenty percent more chance again. Wow, John, look at that. And that was <laughs> left-handed. So All right. So, there you go. so the first I, button I press is I the one go. on the front, John. Yeah. No. So now what you can do, yeah. you should be able to. So we move the box to wherever we want right. with the joystick. Okay. And then, see, so we go here and then punt, push in on it. Okay. And now, yeah, I got you. So, and you'd see all that in the EVF. Right. Wow. I really can see it. So, compose the picture. <clears throat> right. Um, and that's a great thing about using M lenses. Oh, wow. Is you can do that. You can, I can punch in 100%, or you could back it off to 50% and, and set it. 
Wow. I think I might get one sharp here. Well, these all look great. We, we'll dive in. Let's have a look they, close. They look, yeah. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. that makes a big difference to, to my ability to, uh, to get anything sharp, which is kind of important. Well, look at that but look. See at that diff at look that at distance. that look, Coco, look at that yeah. look. I've seen that face before. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, the yeah. best picture I've taken today, the look. That's awesome. I'll mark that for you, Mark. Thank you. So that makes a big difference, just be able to, to take that M lens, uh, use all the technology, right. and to get something sharp. Right, and you know, a lot of like a photographers who are shooting an M camera, mm -hmm. uh, obviously they have M lenses, and to be able to put them on an SL2 or an SL2S is really nice because now you're not limited to focusing just in what's in the center and recomposing. Now you have the high resolution EVF. But a lot of the uh, a lot of these guys would say we're cheating. Cheating. Yeah. You I know didn't the, realize you, this you know, was a you, game. You know man. the you know the M guys, they just hold the camera, they don't even have to look at it, and they've got any lens on and they can just do that without looking at yeah. it and knowing exactly where it's sharp. Yeah. That's where yeah. I'd like to be with an well, M lens. I, I mean I'm not. <laughs> right. So but like so if that's on an M Say a film M from back in the day, right. like an M3, M4, right. um, which we have a picture of right there. Right, M6. What chance have you got of getting that in focus at 1.25? Well, it, it, it comes down to skill, right. practice, and a bit of luck. Right. Uh, but, I mean, I've worked with a fair number of photographers that shoot the 15 Octolux. Right. And they know that lens like they know, you know, their hand, the back of their hand. I mean, it's just like, it's a feeling. And the one interesting thing about, particularly the Noctilux uh, lenses, is the fact that, you know, we kind of poked fun where yours weren't exactly in focus. Right. But a lot of photographers that shoot like a 50 F1 or the 1.2 classic or reissue, it's knowing how to just take it just out of focus to increase that emotional impact of the image. Can I mention a photographer? I wish you would. So one of my favorite photographers, Mark DiPaolo, there you a go. photographer and filmmaker, yeah, definitely. is absolutely mastered that. In, if in, there was anything beyond master, above yeah, master, yeah, double master, it would be Mark. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I hear he you saying one, one with that lens. It is part of him, and when you see him work and shoot, it's he's not it looking. Is amazing. He's not looking through the camera too much, is he? He's he's, kinda, he's looking through the. I mean, he'd like to look through the, the camera, but he's so blind that he's uh, no, no I'm kidding. He's <laughs> no, he's he's looking through the uh, the viewfinder, right? But he, he knows where that distance, and you know, you work with the lens long enough, you really know, okay, from here to here, I'm yeah. 13 and a half yeah, feet, yeah. and you know where that is on that lens, and that's truly amazing. Brilliant. So with that lens, I'm not going to spend too long on it, because okay. I don't have my credit card with me, okay. but I think, I think the fact that you showed me, I mean, if I had obviously I would have learned that if I owned right. the lens, but the ability for me to guarantee focus is very important. Yeah, yeah. Um, not that I actually ever get anything in focus, but knowing that I could have done, I think is very, very yep. important to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's one more thing I would like to do today. Okay, sure. Um, and it's another thing which uh, I'm uh, genuinely quite scared of doing because I don't own either of these right. things. But I've read and heard and so much about the Leica M monochrome, okay, sure. which is pretty new. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to try and make a portrait on it with right. the 75 Noctilux. Okay. This this doesn't tether, folks. So um, we're just going to ask Paul to put it into to capture one for us. Um, I, I I shoot a lot in black and white. You want me over there? I shoot a lot. No, <laughs> I shoot a lot of black and white. Um, so I'll give you the. Card. I've okay. I've never uh, I've never owned a camera that only shoots black and white, 
Um, and I think it, it's, uh, so it, it's, it's, it kind of is a big statement or anything. I mean, a lot of people out there think that just shooting with the, you know, SL2, S or the M or a, a, a regular digital color camera um, and then doing a conversion is the way to go. I'm not, I'm not arguing with that um, because I've never done this. 160 is the lowest. Okay, so ISOs. we can adjust our light a little okay, bit. Okay, so we want to go down, what, two stops? Oh, we can't go down two stops. You want to just go to... Oh, what, what's that at? Four and a half. All right, take it down to the minimum. And then maybe Take I will four. shoot it like instead of one, two, five, like F2. Yeah, let's give it a okay. shot. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to do this quickly, folks, and then I'm going to give the card over to Paul. All right, so this is a rangefinder. <laughs> All right, so I need you to channel your inner Mark DiPaolo right. as your. Hello. Oh my God, I have no idea what I'm doing here. All right. I see well, you do want to, let's see where we are exposure-wise. I see some little boxes lined up. That's, yeah. Is there a play button? Do you want to see this, Manny? I'm going to give it over to Paul super quick to, to bring it up and capture one. Yeah. Should we, um, should we go back to our positions, Joan? Um, I did, that was, I, I did learn a lot, John, today. I learned uh, a lot too, Mark. It's not often you get to see actual side-by-side -side comparisons to make a decision. Uh, number one, because, you know, not that many people own that equipment enough to be able to do that, especially all the lenses. And I think my takeaways, and they're genuinely my takeaways, it comes down to a lot of my ethos in photography anyway, right. that what feels right and feels good from your gut is the most important factor. You're out there making photographs, that's the most important factor. And although there's a lot out there, a minutia of the, the, the 120 versus the 95 versus the 80 versus the medium format, right. these things are all super, super, super important potentially to you. But the bottom line is how it feels. I think it's, it's, uh, it's very important that that user interface mm -hmm. doesn't stop your process. Right. And that's really what Leica is about, is we want to make cameras and design cameras that are an extension of the photographer and don't necessarily get in the way through a list of menus or yeah, the, the, things so, like that. So, they just get so, in your way. That's another thing to say about if you guys haven't tried uh, like uh, uh, digital cameras. The menus are very simple. They're simple enough that I kind of know what I'm doing with them without actually having to hand it off to somebody to set my camera and hand it back. Right. Um, the other thing which has made a huge, huge difference for me as a professional photographer who shoots Leica is that Capture One has turned everything on its head for me because now I can genuinely at a real pace show people what I'm shooting beautifully and quickly on set yeah. and that has made a big difference so uh, like a shooters out there if you haven't tethered or you haven't tried tethering with your S SL2 or SL2S right then we have something great today. We actually are going to give away a capture license. Um, and we're going to give it away by, oh, we're actually giving away two capture licenses. What? And how do we do that, Jacob? Register for the Q&A. And that is how you win one or two. That's how you win either of these licenses. So it'd be a great opportunity for you guys to, uh, to play around with tethering and um, without like, you know, seeing if you like it. I highly recommend it. It's, it's a great way to shoot. Um, sorry? Look at those images. Oh, we have time. All right, All right. Um, we're gonna pop over to that Leica M photo that I just took with the Noctilux. 
Um, wow, that is very, very pretty. Nothing is even remotely sharp, but Mark DePaolo would be proud of me. I think it was André Cartier-Bessant that said the focus was a bourgeois concept. Focus is a bourgeois concept. Um, also, wow. And that's raw out of the camera, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. The, the, was, the, was that the right exposure? That looks good. Oh, this wow. Really yeah. I very much like the, the yeah. rendering on the... Uh, yeah. And you know what's, what's different? You know, a lot of people say, well, take your S3 file, convert it to black and white, or take your SL2 file and convert it to black and white. What's the difference? What's the big deal about monochrome? Right. The big deal is there's no bare filter, so there's no color interpolation calculations that are going on. So the images are purer, are more pure, plus they're sharper, right. and you get more ISO range because now, there's no bare filter to shoot through. So I'm hearing all the technical here, and right. I know it's real, and right. I know people care. Right. But for me, I would have this camera because my mindset would be different going out exactly. as if I only had black and white film. Yeah. And I think, therefore, that would make me take better black and white photos right. instead of thinking, oh, it's fine, I could use it in right. color. Or it's, it's just taking out another variable. I'm shooting right. black and white today. Yeah. And um, that's the whole thing about the M camera and M shooters and kind of the things that they say but it's really true that you're looking through a viewfinder. You're not looking through a lens. So you're seeing the world unfiltered. And just like you, when I'm shooting an M camera, as I'm looking around, I'm looking and seeing differently. And I'm taking, taking different kinds of photographs because, with an M yeah. than I would an S or yeah. an SL2, which is kind of cool. So for a lot of professional photographers, the M is there. Let's call it a Zen camera. It's the me camera. I'm going to go out and shoot for me today. Gamma. So, listen, right? I've, been t I've been told we got to wrap it up. Okay, let's do it. Super big thank you to John here. Thank you very much to Paul for digitaking. Major thank you to Coco, who's gorgeous and made my photographs look good. Thank you to Manny for being second cam. Thank you to Grace for assisting us and helping us today. And thank you to our producer and showrunner, Jacob, over there. Um, I don't know which camera I'm on. If uh, you want to ask us some questions, uh, sign up for the Q&A. It's in the link, and John and I will be here to answer any questions. Thank you so much for watching. That was fun, and hopefully we'll do more. See you soon. Thanks, everybody.